Hello to everyone. My name is Maria Głowacz and I am very pleased to welcome you um, to this new presentation by Irene Dalt, a host, holistic life coach. Irene has already, um, as you know, given the, uh, the session, uh, the presentation, several presentation for us in the past, uh, which were very well received. And based on all the overwhelming positive feedback, we decided to welcome her back to give three presentations. Thanks, uh, Irene, for having accepted our invitation. Today's interactive workshop will be on the subject of belonging and life in the present expat context. As you um, all know, we are facing very important institutional reforms that can create stress and uncertainty. And I ran together with me, uh, has prepared, have prepared and designed this, uh, this session for you. She will address these feelings and insecurities today with the emotional freedom technique so that you can feel safer and more positive in the present context. Some of you have already practiced it, uh, have already uh, been at our session of FT. So probably you know how it works, but there are certainly the new newcomers to our session. And Irene will explain how the EFT works and what is the EFT. This is today. And on Friday, we, have, we will have um, the second session of EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. It will be in 15th of October at the same time. And then we will repeat the presentation that we have already had um, before summer, how to improve you, uh, how to uh, help you with sleeping problems. And she will give you health um, and lifestyle recommendation based on Wednesday and traditional Chinese medicine, as well as she offer, will offer different uh, EFG taping sequences to help you sleep. This is the second session that we have programmed. And the next and the last one will be in, um, uh, on Wednesday, 20 October, again, 4.30 and 6.30. And it will be the presentation on the different psychological profiles we all used to feel safe. This is a co completely new work workshop. And um, in this workshop, you will be introduced to key insights into the emotional defenses that each one of us uses in order to feel secure and gain the approval of others. This is for all our program. Now we are coming back to the session and the title of today, Life Expert, Isolation and Belonging. Thank you very much for your attention. And please, uh, now I give the floor to Irene Nalte. Great, thank you very much, Maria. So um, I'm super happy to be here. I, I, EFT is one of the great passions of mine. And in this really short workshop, I'm really going to introduce you into into how it works and hopefully um, you can get a clear sensation of the changes it can evoke in the shortest of time. So my name is Irene Nolte. I'm a holistic health and life coach and EFT practitioner. I am half German and half Romanian, but I grew up in Brussels uh, in the context of the European institutions. I went to the European school um, and so having these three nationalities, German, Romanian and growing up in Belgium, I'm what is called this typical third culture kid, right? Um, so having parents of two nationalities and growing up uh, in a third nation. And I'm saying that with regard to this talk today because this question of belonging or as we say in German, Heimat, um, I, I didn't really know that, right? So this question of belonging, I actually grew up with it, with this question of belonging, because this, this belongingness was such a mystery to me, you know, like when people come from a culture and they grow up there and the parents come from this culture, 
So I grew up with this, with this question in my heart and um, I was only later on able to solve it actually through very different means, through creating my own community and uh, through finding, yeah, through finding really like my family and creating my family and so on. Now, <clears throat> I started off my career by studying international human rights law and international relations. Um, I worked as a human rights activist and then quite early on in my career, I had some kind of like burnout crisis, which I now understand as an invitation of life to really switch, um, to switch my career, which I very slowly and cautiously did. Um, so I studied Shiatsu and then traditional Chinese medicine, coaching, EFT. And then with time really understood that I wanted to dedicate my life to the healing arts. And that's what I do now. And I feel greatly passionate about helping people with emotional turmoil and questioning and stress and so on. So in today's talk that I've prepared, uh, there are two parts. So the first part, which is rather short because I really want the session to be practical and if you want even interactive. Um, so in the first part, I'm going to be speaking about belonging and the psychological and emotional functions of belongingness. So what, why do we need to belong? Why is that so important? Uh, why is that actually a really basic human need? And I'm going to place this question into the expat context. And if I say expat, I mean Brussels, right? I mean, obviously there are expats all over the globe, but I do think that um, the, uh, the circumstances of the European institutions are particular. Um, so I, of course, I include people in Luxembourg. I know people from Luxembourg who tune into these talks as well. So, and then place this entire institutional context into the current global context, which is not an easy one. Um, needless to say that we've all been through a lot in the last year, COVID, lockdown, home office. I mean, the world was standing on its head, right? Which invariably took a toll on all of us. And if there were already um, issues of loneliness or alienation or, or feeling distanced, um, the lockdown and home office and social distancing only accentuated that. So we'll run through that briefly <clears throat> and then we will directly plunge into, um, into the emotional freedom technique. So um, EFT, well, I'll explain it um, in, in, in that moment. My hope is really that with this session, <clears throat> at the end of the session, I know you've all had a long day and you want to relax, so I fully get that, um, that you can all feel just that more relaxed and more reassured um, and that maybe you will discover EFT as a very simple tool that you can integrate into your daily practices. I think when the world is standing on its head in the way it is right now, we live in a world of turmoil, it's so important that we all develop practices, simple practices that we can integrate in our day-to-day -day life that can help our emotional resilience, that can help us feel str stronger, that can help us with anxiety or stress or everything that's coming up. And EFT can definitely be a tool for that if it's of interest to you, of course. So I'm just going to switch to the presentation and share my screen. One second. <clears throat> Here we go. Here we go. Okay, and now I need to maximize it. One sec. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Do I just a thumbs up? Super. Okay. So here we go. So yes, it, it works. Wonderful. Okay. So I just need to minimize you guys here. Okay. Cool. Okay. So belonging. Uh, just a quick definition. To belong uh, is a feeling. To belong is a feeling uh, that that is generated by being part of a group. Um, and comes from having a close relationship from others, right? So this is how the psychology dictionary defines it. It is a primary psychological and emotional need. Um, it invokes nearness and acceptance by the others, right? So that can be a small group of people, a larger group of people or society as a whole. Um, belonging, when one feels that one belongs is deeply reassuring and it is based, based on trust and acceptance. <clears throat> it acts as a buffer to stress and in our childhood years questions of attachment so in this case it's more attachment actually secure our survival right so children who don't feel safely attached um, feel deeply threatened and I think what we then witness later on in life if there wasn't really that much safe attachment in childhood 
um, these questions of belonging can resurface differently, but they, I, I think they do resurface. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> examples of belongingness. So at the social level uh, can be professional organizations, educational institutions, schools and other um, recreative clubs or so sport club or online communities. For many people, it's online communities more and more. And of course, at the private level, you have family members, intimate, your intimate partner, uh, friends or colleagues. So a lot of human, very much of human behavior and emotions stem from our innate psychological need to belong. It is such a deep need in all of us, whether we realize it or not. And so much so that I'm pretty sure many of you or most of you know this, um, it's Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? And, and I really love this pyramid because so often things come back to that. So what you see here, so Maslow was a, was a psychologist, right? Uh, in the US in the 1940s, 50s and 60s, and he developed this pyramid of needs. And what you see are five different levels, um, uh, five different motivational levels. And we start at the bottom with the physiological needs. So every time one strata of needs is satisfied within ourselves, we're motivated to move up to the next strata. So at the very bottom, you have physiological needs. So obviously things like food, water, um, uh, but also shelter, clothing, warmth and sleep and so on. So that this is really basic core needs, right? Once that is satisfied, we move up one tier and we come into the realm of safety. So you need to protect yourself, you want to protect your family, you, need, you want to protect your property. So in here come things like rule of law um, or the police or, 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 or of course employment, right? To, to generate your, your, to generate your physio physiological safety. But just after that, so really just after the two most absolute basic core needs, Maslow places belongingness and the need for love, right? So this of course includes intimate relationships, friends, um, and, and, and yeah, and just the general sense of being accepted and seen by others for who we are. And that really struck me, you know, that, that it would come so, um, right, right, so soon after just the basic core needs. It accentuates or it emphasizes its importance. Now, the absence of belongingness. Maybe you remember a time in your life when you didn't feel you belonged, you know, maybe as a teenager at school or when you went to study at university or indeed when you came to Brussels. Um, I, I think, I mean, if we're all honest, I think everyone has already felt like they don't really belong. It can even be like in a, in a language course or in a sports club, you know, when you feel a bit clumsy or something. And it, it, it does, it does do a lot to us, you know, it can generate feelings of anxiety, obviously loneliness, uh, it can lead to isolation, uh, it can accentuate social anxiety, you know, you feel like if you, if you have that, um, if you have that memory within yourself, this emotional memory that you somehow don't belong, or that social groups aren't safe for you, then you carry that with you, and then it can be incredibly stressful to meet other people. Um, obviously, increased stress, alienation, uh, it can lead to lack of self-esteem, right? We talk ourselves down and, and can be so harsh and brutal on, uh, on ourselves. Loss of motivation, of course. Shame, I think it, leads, it can lead to deep shame. And when you feel into shame, I think shame makes us feel a little bit, bit, little bit less human, right? We feel different, we feel apart. And um, shame is a difficult emotion but that can definitely come from feeling uh, uh, lonely and, and as an outsider. It can totally also um, lead to depression because we feel so powerless to change our circumstances. And needless to say that um, this, this, this separation we all had to live through because of the pandemic, so the social distancing and home office and lockdown and so on, I mean, it just added to it. So if before that was already an issue, um, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if it got strengthened uh, or intensified is the word uh, by the latest developments in our society. So 
if we look at life in the in the um, expat context, um, I think there's such an inherent paradox, you know, in this in this Brussels bubble. Um, and I take the liberty of saying that because I grew up in it myself. I think from the outside, uh, very often, if one has made it to Brussels, um, then very often from the outside world, the idea is that there can't be any problems, right? That you've made it, you ha you're in this privileged position, um, and therefore probably that there can't be any 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 yeah any problems. The truth, however, is every human being is a human being, right? So regardless of of the circumstances. Obviously, it's a privileged position, but that doesn't mean that there isn't helplessness and pain and loneliness and 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 suffering, right? Which is um, which is universal. So, <clears throat> what does it mean the expat uh, context? So, on the one hand, it means that you had, I assume, most of you had to relocate, um, perhaps once, perhaps already several times. And for some, this can mean a tremendous loss. You know, perhaps you are integrated uh, in your in your home country. Perhaps you have a family. Perhaps you you have so many friends that you had to leave. For others, and so I don't want to make this bad or wrong in any way, right? For others, moving and relocating is this amazing opportunity. You know, to get away from where they're from, um, to reach a place of hope, of change, of progress, um, and of new opportunities. Right? So there's always both. Um, being an expat does mean be, being uprooted because by definition it means you don't live in the country of, uh, of origin. It means losing your existing community or your original community, family, friends, and of course you can gain a new community, right? So loads of people, many people here, most people probably, um, really integrated and have new friends and of course it's 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 super to be in such an international environment and have friends from so many different nationalities but it's not always easy um, difficulties can also be adaptation to the cultural context in this case the belgian context or the culture of luxembourg both quite mysterious <laughs> cultures um, but wonderful when you do get to know them more profoundly there can be language difficulties um, as well as opportunities. There can be a great difficulty of establishing new social circles. There might be, so many of my clients say that to me, you know, at home, at least I can go to the forest. At home, at least I can go to the mountains. And so there's, there are these loss of reference points, you know, of like how to replenish, how to come back to yourself, which very often actually is nature or natural environments. And, with regards to the Brussels bubble, let's be honest, the weather doesn't exactly help, right? So in terms of like establishing a new life here, that's not really exactly an easy point either. All right, so adding to all of this um, is what I know and heard about uh, what's happening within the institutions that after the lo lockdown and all this like huge time of home office, now comes this restructuring time. So offices are being pulled together and there's open plan offices and in some parts in the parliament you know you're supposed to go back many days and the commission fewer days so it's this whole this whole huge turmoil which can of course lead to feelings of insecurity and stress and worry so that was just the, a brief overview um, of the general context and let me just i'm going to stop sharing my screen now oh, i just wanted to show you this and now we're going to go into the emotional freedom technique and I will demonstrate these points to you. So one second, how do I do this? Here, stop sharing screen and here we are. Okay, is everyone still with me? Hang on, Maria, can you just come back in? Is, yeah, everyone's here, everyone's here, it's fine, okay? Okay, super, good, then I can. All right, so then I will now plunge into the part of the emotional freedom technique. So <clears throat> EFT was developed in the 1980s, 1990s, um, initially by a psychologist in the US called Roger Callahan, um, who was working with a woman called Mary, who had a supreme phobia of water. So every time she was approaching a water element, let it be a swimming pool, a lake or the ocean, um, she, she, she felt sick. Um, and he didn't know how to solve it. And he tried, so obviously there's some trauma, some, some, something that was triggering her. 
And so he was trying all these different approaches with her, cognitive behavioral and, 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 and many different psychological um, approaches. And it didn't work enough, right? And he really wanted to help her. So he went on to study the, the Chinese meridian system. So in traditional Chinese medicine, there are meridians, uh, energy channels that run through the body. And on these meridians, we have acupuncture points. So EFT is also called tapping. Hang on a minute. Someone, Maria, can you mute everyone? Someone is typing and I can hear it. So on these, on these uh, meridians, we have acupuncture points that we tap in EFT. And this is why it's also called tapping. While we tap, so while we tap on these acupuncture points, um, these different points, it sends a calming signal to the amygdala. And the amygdala is a part of your limbic brain that is constantly scanning your life, your surrounding, everything that you do for emotional response. So literally it's like a, a smoke alarm. So if you, smell, if you smell smoke, your amygdala is gonna fire off a signal leading to you secreting adrenaline, perhaps even cortisol. So you get up and you check what's going on and then extinguish the fire, of course, metaphorically speaking, right? Um, and so what you can do with EFT is that you can tap, you can work on all different emotions. You can work on, you can tap on exhaustion, you can tap on anger, on fear, on sadness, on things of the past, on things of the future. Maybe you have a, uh, a report to write for, for tomorrow and you feel super stressed. So you can tap on all these different things. There have been, if you're interested, there have been countless clinical trials now done on EFT. Um, and it's been proven across, I mean, Harvard did study, Harvard University, there, there's so many studies, if you look online, that the fact of tapping these different acupuncture points lowers your cortisol levels. Cortisol, of course, being uh, the hormone that's being secreted when you're afraid, right? So in terms of stress, in terms of, of burnout, in times of overwhelm, tapping these points is, um, is decidedly going to reduce uh, the cortisol within your body, which means that you're more relaxed, you're calmer, and you can take on a change of perspective. The, um, I always like to tell a tiny anecdote to explain how EFT works. So imagine that there, there's a little boy, let's call him John, and he's eight years old, and he's, uh, let's say he's a French speaker, and he's going to English classes for the first time. And he's trying to say something um, in the course. And his teacher, Mrs. Smith, is having a bad day and says, oh my goodness, you have a terrible accent. Um, and all the kids in the classroom laugh. Now we can imagine that John in that moment has a shock, right? That he has a shock to his heart. He feels humiliated. He feels ashamed. And that from there, he develops a set of limiting beliefs. So. The first limiting belief, of course, being I'm no good at, um, at speaking English. But from there, you know how, how our mind works, right? From there, perhaps he's going to say, I'm no good at learning foreign languages. And then maybe when he has to give a presentation, he's absolutely mortified because he still has this emotional memory in the back of his mind. And so what we do with EFT is that um, we tap on these different, different acupuncture points to reduce um, the, the emotional intensity of a memory. I just, I just noticed that I didn't finish the story with Mary. So this woman, basically you had this, this psychologist and he then went on to study the Chinese meridian system. And he discovered that this under the eyes is the first point on the stomach meridian. And so he asked this woman, Mary, who had this phobia of water to stimulate this point and her needs to be sick as she was approaching a water element subsided. So he thought that was really interesting. And then from there, he developed EFT, which you can really see as um, Eastern, Eastern medicine, so traditional Chinese medicine, meeting Western psychology and the two come together. And this is why I think it's so, it's so fascinating. Okay, <clears throat> so I will first demonstrate the points. So in particular for newcomers, I mean, I, I know that slowly people really know EFT, but um, I know also for for many people, um, this, is, this is completely new. So the first thing I would like you to do is just to find, and it doesn't matter if it's the left hand or the right hand, to find your little finger. And there's a little bone. 
And just below the little bone, you can tap into the side of the hand. And you can do that with one finger, with two fingers, with three fingers, whatever works for you, right? And you don't have to tap particularly hard. In, you can also switch hands as you go. <clears throat> okay. And then, so that's the first point. Then we tap between the eyebrows. And then next to the eyes. And with this point, you need to be careful because people have the tendency to tap too high or too low. It's really next to the eye. Very good. Then it's under the eyes. So you remember that's Mary's point, the woman who was afraid of, uh, of water elements. Very good. You actually feel a U-shaped bone under the eye and it's on the edge of that bone. Very good. Then under the nose. Under the mouth. And then on the clavicle, clavicule, schlüsselbein. So schlüssel, clavicule, clavicle is here the, the diagonal bone. And it's on the edge of where this bone um, comes down, right? You can't do anything wrong. Just tap there. You also have the, the thymus gland here, which um, is nice to stimulate. Super. And then on the head, these are the points. Very good. Okay, so that's it. This, this is really, um, this is the core of the emotional freedom technique. As you can see, it's really not complicated at all. And the fantastic thing with EFT is that it's 100% safe. So you can't, you can't harm yourself, you can't hurt yourself, you can't do anything wrong. The only, I've, I've never met anyone with whom it doesn't work, but should it, should it not work deeply with you, maybe have some water because you might be dehydrated, right? This is energy medicine. So what we're doing by tapping, we're repairing the energetic body um, of, yeah, of the energy, the energetic cycle of your body. Okay, so I've prepared three rounds, three EFT rounds. I will tap and speak at the same time and I invite you to join along, to join in. So you can just copy what I do. Um, in the first round, it's just a short, uh, it's just a short uh, sequence because I just want everyone to discover it. The second one will be specifically for your work context. So before this presentation, I had a chat with Maria and she told me that what people feel particularly anxious and stressed about right now is that is that is the return to office, uh, is coming back to the office. And, and, um, and, and, and all this office culture changing, right? In addition to the workload that people are under. And in the third round, I wrote a more personal text. So this is really about feeling loneliness and isolation in your private life, okay? Okay, Irene, may I ask you something? Of course. Um, so could you just put the spotlight on you? How, how I, can't, I can't find, because it would be better for all to see how you're tapping uh and and the so let me have a look here spotlight one second spotlight, spotlight on you. For everyone continue remove all pinned videos spotlight even an order for everyone will remove all pinned videos is this better i don't I normally don't. i had this uh, option but i didn't find i couldn't find okay Spotlight is late. It's better now. Yeah, I think it's better now. It's better now for the, the who is asking. Uh, he was. Could you? It was the Tatiana. It's better now, Tatiana. Okay. okay. Anyway, we continue. And there's the the the. the I take the opportunity to ask you. Would you could we send the presentation to all participants? It's the recording, of course. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, okay. So before we start with the tapping, I would like everyone to just lean back for a second. It's the end of a long day. Um, and just receive a few deep breaths. So really like make yourself comfortable and receive a few deep breaths into your lungs, into your stomach. And just arrive in this moment. If you have your legs crossed, perhaps you can uncross them. And I just want you to think about your current life situation, private and professional. 
I know that most people's lives work incredibly well, but we always have some aspects that are that are stressful and that are difficult, right? Um, and so just tune into everything that's going on right now. And I want you to feel <clears throat> what's going on within yourself. So maybe some tension, maybe some stress, maybe some anxiety, maybe some exhaustion, maybe some frustration. I don't know what you're feeling. So just tune into it and just notice in your body where you're holding tension, maybe in your chest, maybe in your stomach, maybe in your head and what the emotion is. So let's just say it's stress um, for the sake of, of this conversation. And really important, I want you to scale it. So let's just say you're stressed on a scale from, I don't know, six out of 10 or something. Zero is really not stressed at all. 10 is extremely stressed. It can be the same for tired or, or disappointed or I, I don't know what you're feeling, right? Okay, so just make a mental note of the intensity with which you're feeling what you're feeling before we start. And then I will start the tapping. So I will show, I will tap and I will always leave a break between what I say for you to repeat. Yeah, and I trust that everyone's muted. Okay, so tapping on the side of the hand. And again, it doesn't matter if it's the left hand or the right hand. And please repeat after me tapping while you're tapping, even though it's been a lot lately. COVID, home office, going back to work. Adding to things already happening in my own life. I choose to relax now. Even though I have been through a lot. Of tension, stress and worry. And at times I feel overwhelmed. I honor how I feel now. Even though at times it's been lonely and I have felt disconnected from this world, it's safe for me to relax now. Super. And now we start to tap the other points, yeah? So again, you can tap with two fingers or one finger as you wish. All this tension, and please repeat with me, all this tension next to the eyes, all this overwhelm under the eyes, so much to deal with under the nose by myself. And in the mouth, we all had to change so rapidly. Capital, as the world was standing on its head last year. Good. On the head, I choose to release this tension. between the eyebrows, I choose to release the tension of these memories. Next to the eyes. Now, in this moment, under the eyes, I choose to let go. Under the nose, it's okay for me to relax now. Under the mouth, here and now I am safe. Clavicle, I allow my body to relax. On the head, I allow 
my mind to relax. Between the eyebrows, I allow my breath to deepen. Next to the eyes, receive a deep breath in and breathe out. Under the eyes, I allow my breath to deepen. Under the nose, replenishing my body. Under the mouth, allowing myself to slow down. Clavicle, letting go of all this tension. My hand, letting go of all these thoughts. Between the eyebrows, it is safe for me to arrive now. Next to the eyes, in the here and now. Under the mouth, sorry, under the eyes, <laughs> releasing all this tension under the nose, releasing any remaining tension under the mouth, releasing any remaining tension. Clavicle, I can relax now. On the head, it's safe for me to relax. Okay, and receive a deep breath in and breathe out okay <clears throat> so that was the first round obviously the text was very general um, if people feel like sharing in the chat um, if they feel any different or if they feel any changes please be welcomed you can just write maybe you were on a six and i don't know where you're now maybe on a four or on a three or something so if you feel like sharing something now is a good moment and then in the second round, I will plunge into the second round. And there, okay, so we have from Gabriel writes, he feels invigorated. Corina from an eight to four, that's so great. I feel I've lowered the tension, wonderful. From Paolo, so nice, <clears throat> great. So you see, we just did one little round. Uh, I feel more relaxed, says Carolina, great. So we just did one little round um, that was very general because obviously I mean, in this context for so many people, we can't go uh, into, the, into personal experiences, but just by tapping very generally, very lightly, um, and for three, four minutes, people already feel more relaxed. So I'm really happy that you can feel that. Okay, I'm going to go into the work context now, yeah, for the next round. So this is um, obviously, there are so, Petya says it didn't work for me. <laughs> it's okay and thank you for sharing that too yeah so of course you need to find the words that speak to you right and um, there are so many different contexts uh, contexts that um, that uh, it's difficult to enter into each of one but just just hang in there maybe the next round is going to work for you hopefully so um here um it's about the restructuring that's going on within the institutions I totally appreciate that that's not the case for everyone, but this is the text I wrote um, based on the on the request that I received. Yeah, okay. So just, I assume that people are going back to work. I assume that for some people it's stressful and um, voila, let's just go with that. So tapping on the side of the hand. And just, yeah, before we start, just feel into how you feel about this changing work context. Are you stressed? Is it, uh, is it challenging? Does it even feel threatening? For some, some people are afraid, you know, to go back and meet people again and to be in, in shared spaces. So let's, um, let's honor all those experiences. Okay. Tapping on the side of the hand. So I just have a question here. Will closing my eyes deepen the effect? Um, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay, I'm going to go into the tapping sequence and afterwards I will answer your questions. Even though I have to adapt, and so please repeat while tapping on the side of the hand, yeah? Even though I have to adapt, 
<clears throat> and readapt to these new ways of working. I choose to relax now. Even though I have to deal with uncertainty and pressure and change in the workplace, I accept myself and honor how I feel. Even though there's so much readaptation and pressure adding to my habitual workload and I feel stressed and tired and overwhelmed, I choose to feel safe now and open to new possibilities. Okay, between the eyebrows, working from home. <clears throat> Next to the eyes, returning to the office. All these changes. Under the nose and pressure at work. Under the mouth, as if life wasn't stressful enough. Clavicle. New ways of working. And all this uncertainty. Between the eyebrows, all this stress. Next to the eyes, all this overwhelm. Under the eyes, and this workload that never seems to end. Under the nose, at times, I feel so overwhelmed. <clears throat> Under the mouth, at times, it's all too much. Clavicle, all the stress. On the head, and all this tension between the eyebrows. I feel overwhelmed with everything. Next to the eyes, and I choose to honor how I feel. Under the eyes, but I don't want to feel like this all day. Under the nose, so I choose to slow down now. Under the mouth, I allow myself to relax. Clavicle, it's safe for me to relax. On the head, maybe I can turn the situation around. Between the eyebrows, Maybe these changes have something good. Next to the eyes, I allow myself to see new possibilities. Under the eyes, I am open to trying them out. Under the nose, I am open to discovering the positives. Under the mouth, mouth of this new situation. Clavicle, even if I'm tired. On, on the head, letting go of all this resistance. Between the eyebrows, letting go of all these worries. Next to the eyes, I have worried enough. <clears throat> Under the eyes, I have come so far in life. 
I'm the nurse. I have already managed so many things. End of the mouth. I will manage this too. Clavicle. I have already dealt with bigger things. On the head. And I choose to feel proud. Between the eyebrows of all I have achieved. Next to the eyes, I choose to feel proud. Under the eyes of myself. Under the nose, I allow myself to feel. Under the mouth, gentleness and compassion. Clavicle towards myself. On the head and towards others. Between the eyebrows, it's been a lot. <clears throat> Next to the eyes, for us all. Under the eyes, I allow myself to feel safe. Under the nose, I allow myself to explore this new situation. Under the mouth, letting go of any remaining tension. Clavicle, I'm open to exploring this new situation. On the head, letting go of any remaining tension. And please receive a deep breath in and breathe out. All right. So how are people feeling? I'm just gonna have a look at the chat. So, okay, lots of responses here. Um, so if you want to share, you can, you can write things very relaxed. I had a bad headache, now it's gone, fantastic. Gabriel writes even better, Estrella, feel sleepy, less tired from a six to a four. Super, more relaxed, great, more relaxed. That's really nice. Yeah, it's a flow, you know, I mean, it takes a little while until you get into it, but the great thing is they're constantly the same points. So um, yeah, voila, so it's really not very difficult. And I, I think it's uh, it really helps to get into this meditative state I also, I also think our intuition works better, you know, like after tapping around it too, at least that's how it is for me. Um, after I've tapped and also when I tap with clients, you know, like after we've tapped for around or two, things become much clearer, you know, your, your intuition, your inner voice becomes much clearer and, um, and then you can have better, better knowledge of the steps you should take. Okay, the question is, how often should you do this? You should do this whenever you feel the need to. So if you're feeling stressed or anxious or tired or any emotion or any feeling that is not pleasant, you can tap. So if you have a particular problem, um, you need to tap. You can tap until the problem has gone, right? So if you're feeling, let's imagine you have, you feel tension towards your boss. I mean, I'm just inventing something. Uh, because you had you had uh, there there was a conflict or there's something you had you, you don't agree well you tap until until you feel at ease you know until you feel completely at ease and then you can re-enter the conversation in a different way in a much more open and uh, perhaps even generous way so we tap until we feel better there there are no rules otherwise you can tap once you can tap 10 times um however however often you want Okay, so Antonius, that's a really good question. So Antonius is asking, I realize it's important to accompany the tapping with a positive, optimistic text. Yes, thank you for that question. That's a really good question. So what we do with EFT is we always start with a negative, which can come as a surprise. You know, in the beginning we go, we say, I'm tired, I'm unhappy, I feel angry, I feel sad, I feel upset. The reason for that is um, you, 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 let's imagine you have a wound. Um, at first, you want to disinfect the wound, right, before you put a plaster on there. 
or imagine you have you parked your car somewhere you didn't pay the parking ticket and now you have you have you have to pay the ticket by just putting it in, into the drawer it's not going to take care of itself so what we do in EFT is we first go to the negative which by the way I think is really important uh, in any healing or processing session you know like we we have to we have to go to the place that's that's struggling or that's in pain um, to shed light onto it so that we can transform it. And then we add the positive round afterwards. So yes, it's it's we always add the positive round. I would be cautious before saying it too quickly, right? So if someone's upset, if someone's really stressed and you immediately go like, ah, it's gonna be fine, you know, like if the person is not gonna respond to you. So yes, optimistic text, but spend a little while on whatever you're struggling with can we tap on only one point or do we need to tap them all okay so i in my experience let's say you're in a meeting and you can't exactly start tapping you, you already have an effect if you only tap this point you know and you can even do that discreetly under you know like without anyone seeing so that will already have an effect they had they did tests on this actually um, where they had a group of people that only imagined tapping these different points and that already had an effect, which I find fascinating. So, um, so you can try it out. Every person's different. For instance, this point really works for me, this one too. Um, this one, I don't feel so much effect. So everyone's different. So you can really, um, you can really play around with it. Someone's asking, should we combine it with other procedures? especially initial preps. Gabriel, I'm sorry, I don't fully understand your question. What do you mean with other procedures? Do you mean other healing approaches or, or, or therapeutic approaches? I, I don't know what it means. So let me just have a look. There was someone else who asked something about points. So let me just scroll down. Yes, healing procedures. EFT can absolutely be combined with everything else. That's why it's so great. So. I mean, in my practice, you know, people come for coaching or for constellations, and then we do a little bit of EFT. More and more psychologists, more and more psychiatrists are using it. So it's really, really being channeled into the mainstream, which I think is fantastic. I think it should be taught in schools because it's so simple. It's so easy and kids love it. Kids love to tap. So if you have children who are afraid of falling asleep or afraid of some some of getting bad grades or afraid of an exam you can totally tap with them and it really helps them more and more children have anxiety um, uh, because of the the current world context and school context and so on so eft is a really I and mean, you see right it's really not rocket science right you tap these points by the way you can find them on my website there there's the graph you can see them there um, <clears throat> and um you tap the points and you just say some ca some calming words. It, it doesn't get more complex than that. So you can really take that home to your family and help them with it. Okay, so if there are not any more questions, I will go to the third round. And that is a much more personal text, right? The, the heading or the, the headline of this, um, the title, the title of this talk is, is um, belonging and isolation, right? And in isolation, of course, there's, there's loneliness and there's sadness. So I thought it was uh, appropriate to um, to do also text on the more personal context. I totally appreciate if that's not applicable to you. Many of you, you know, might not feel that at all, and that's fine. So if you just feel like it, you can still tap along. Okay, <clears throat> so we do as before. Um, if you are feeling alone, if you are feeling a little bit isolated, um, if you have been struggling in these last years, um, then um, then just feel into it. Just feel into it for a moment and see what it does to you. Maybe you feel sadness in your chest, in your heart. Um, maybe there's yeah, it's just something present in your system. Just become aware to it before we start tapping. And you can scale it. And we scale so that we can compare to how we felt before. Yeah, so that's the purpose. Okay, so let's tap all together. Uh, of course, I can't see you, but this is just my invitation. So tapping on the side of the hand. Okay, and repeat with me. Even though at times I feel disconnected, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though at times I feel disconnected and alone, 
I choose to accept myself. Even though at times I'm not so sure how to feel safe, in this constantly changing world. I choose to feel okay right now. Even though I have this longing to belong and to feel loved, I honor where I am in my life right now. between the eyebrows. <clears throat> At times, I feel unsupported. Next to the eyes. And at times, I feel lonely. Under the eyes. And I am longing. Under the nose. For deeper connections in my life. Under the mouth, deeper connection with myself. Clavicle, and a deeper connection with others. On the head, at times it feels like everyone's too busy. Between the eyebrows. Too busy to care. Next to the eyes. And too busy to cool. Under the eyes. I feel like I'm the only one to feel lonely. Under the nose. Even though it's such a well-kept secret under the mouth, that most people feel lonely at times. Clavicle, so I honor how I feel. On the head, because I'm not alone in this. Between the eyebrows, perhaps I'm not so different. Next to the eyes, to everyone else. And the eyes. I long for a deeper connection. Under the nose, with my partner. And the mouth, with a partner. Clavicle with my children on the head, with my colleagues, between the eyebrows, with my friends. Next to the eyes and working from home can be lonely. Under the eyes, but I don't want to feel like this anymore. Under the nose, I want to shift this around. Under the mouth, and I can. Here we go. I am open for change. On the head. I am open to turning this around. Between the eyebrows. In this moment, next to the eyes, I can think differently. Under the eyes. What if there was a way? Under the nose to go deeper within myself. Under the mouth. And to go deeper 
with others. I can connect at a deeper level. On the head with all my truth. Between the eyebrows, opening for change. Next to the eyes, letting go of any resistance. Under the eyes, letting go of feeling stuck. Under the nose, or resentful. Under the mouth, or disappointed. Clavicle, I choose to forgive life. On the head, for everything. Between the eyebrows, for the way things have been. To the eyes and for the way things are. Under the eyes, I'm ready to see new possibilities. Under the nose, letting go of my current mindset. Under the mouth, I can create change. Clavicle, I am open to new insights. On the head, on how to create deeper ties. Between the eyebrows, new ways to connect with people. Next to the eyes. Letting go of all this loneliness under the eyes. Letting go of this feeling of isolation. Under the nose. Letting go of the doubt that I can do it. Under the mouth that I can find new ways to connect. With myself, on the head and with others. Between the eyebrows, I'm making my desired life a priority. Next to the eyes, I choose to find a way under the eyes to create true belonging. Under the nose, Letting go of any remaining sadness. I dedicate this path <clears throat> to finding my solutions. On the head, I'm making my desired life a priority. Receive a deep breath in. And breathe out. Okay. If you want, um, you can share how you feel and what's going on for you. Um, yeah. So Maria is asking, can you explain some more detail on constellations? Um, I'm happy to do that, but maybe at the end because it's uh, it's it's a really different technique. I wrote a very long article about it. You can find it on my website, Maria. So um, there's a long, long article that I wrote explaining how systemic constellations work. It's in the um, what's my website? I'm happy to write it. It's it's just my name, Irina Nolte. It's in the, in the invitation. Yeah, yeah. So Alfredo's writing. Self-esteem is growing. Thank you, uh, Alfredo, for sharing that. That's a, that's really an honest comment. Thank you. I mean, not the, that the others are not comment, but this, yeah, that's um, thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, I just 
Maybe some people feel so Tatiana's writing more relaxed. That's great. <clears throat> I have two more slides that I wanted to share um, and then maybe less adrenaline. Great, from Julia. The last one hit closest to home. Yeah, I hear you, Corinna. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's more personal, right? The last one was really much more, much more personal. Uh, Maria, I started to yawn. Okay, that's great. So just to come back to what Maria said at the beginning, um, on Friday, there is a full presentation on sleeping problems, just because someone is, is saying I started to yawn. So you can definitely drink water, um, but yawning is good because it shows that you're that you're relaxing. So on Friday, I will give a presentation and a one and a half hour presentation on sleeping problems. So it's both about uh, the difficulty of falling asleep, um, as well as waking between three and five, right? So in traditional Chinese medicine, the reasons for those two are different. There are different reasons why we struggle to fall asleep, and there are different reasons for why we wake between three and five. And I'm going to be talking about all of that um, on Friday, same thing, 4.30 until 6. And then... Um, Next Wednesday, we have the presentation. I will give a presentation on different psychological profiles. So that will just, um, that explains why some people are very controlling and maybe some people are very needy and some people space out and aren't really there. So I personally find it super fascinating, this content when I learned it. Um, so I will share that with you. That's next week, Wednesday. Let me just share these last two slides with you, um, and and then if you and then I'm happy to answer all the questions you might have. So just let me do this. Share screen. I'm just going to go here and maximize. Okay. So this is just the the holistic perspective of things, um, or at least my holistic perspective on things. It's just we can't control life, right? Like life as much as we try, as much as we create, try to create safety and control around us, it's not going to work. Life has its own agenda and um, we, we can try our best and, and we, can, we can do so many things, but, but, but life, life has its own plan, right? So the only thing that we can actually do is to commit our own life force and that of others. So by that, I mean really, engaging with a conscious commitment to overcoming feelings of fear, doubt, resentment, anger, disappointment, and last but not least, violence, right? We have to be so careful in the present context, you know, with feelings of, of anger and fear that are getting in our way um, and that we, yeah, that we manage to always, that we work for peace, basically, with our neighbor, with our family member, with our colleagues, um, and with society as a whole. How does it work? I mean, how, how, how practically can we do that? Um, I think it's super important. And I know that everyone is extremely busy, right? But if we can just create a culture, and by that I mean a culture within your day-to-day -day life, where you pause and where you bring awareness to your inner life, just the way we did it today. You just, it, can, it can take one minute where you just lean back and you rest and you breathe and you come back to yourself and you just, you just ask yourself, what am I actually doing? Like, what am I actually engaging with? Um, am I engaging with energies that raise my life frequency and that of others or that actually reduce it, right? Do I blame? Do I, do I engage with, with, with anger, with shaming, with, with criticism? Or do I try to encourage and praise both myself and others? We always have a choice here. Now, if I say pause, that can be anything. It can be pause from actually really pausing and just stopping to type and looking out of the window or dropping the pen and just taking a few deep breaths. But it can also be things like while you're cooking, you know, and you become very present to your cooking or you listen to music or you make some art, you paint, you walk in a park, you walk in a garden, you just sit on your balcony and watch, watch the, the, the wind in the trees. All of these are pauses, but it's so important that we come back to our inner world and that we strengthen it and that we cultivate it. Um, take great care of your body, uh, eating whole foods. You know, I mean, I would really say we should be eating organic food because it protects both our body and, and the earth. Um, and I think we owe it to the earth. And of course, also gentle exercise to the extent that you can. Practice forgiveness, you know, so 
we so easily get enmeshed with others, you know, oh, he said that, oh, she said that, da, 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 da. And then we go in this kind of like victim anger kind of role, just to the extent that you can just try and let go of it. Um, not, not to let a wrongdoer off the hook, that is not at all the idea. It's more to free you from this kind of to the chains that you, that we can we can get entangled in um, long term if we're not careful, and that takes away our energy. Uh, and always try to reduce the emotional intensity and come back to the sense of stillness. I'm saying all these things because, um, needless to say, I'm just going to stop sharing the screen. Needless to say that things have been intense, right? Uh, I do think that. Um, well, these are not easy times we're living in, right? So simple practices, you know, healthy food, organic food, cooking it, spending time with yourself, doing a bit of EFT, what, whatever works for you. For some people, sailing works or hiking in the mountains or doing meditation or yoga, of course. I mean, all of this is fantastic, right? So, but having, having your personal toolbox that really works for you so that you can develop the sense of belonging within yourself, right? We can try to find it outside, but you really have to, um, to work on it and, 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 and build it within yourself and then you can carry it out in, into the world. Voila, that's it for me. Um, I'm really happy to take questions and uh, if you want to, to share things or ask things. I'm also happy if you, if you, if you would like to tap on something else, we still have 15 minutes. So if there's a special request or something, I'm really happy to, to go into that as well. Maria, I pass on the word to you if you want to, if you want to say something or if you want to intervene. Otherwise, yes. yes, thank you very much, Irene. Um, thank you. It was so great to see that um, every time I'm, I'm, I'm assisting at this kind of uh, deception, it works for me. And I'm not the kind of uh, you know, people who are very um, concentrated and take time for, uh, for themselves. So, um, what I would like to tell you that uh, certainly a lot of colleagues. Um, appreciate as well, and they would like to maybe have more um, explanation concerning the tapping. Tapping is very important. So even we don't have uh, the slides, but it will be on the recording. Uh, you can review and replay. But could you just uh, maybe explain ag uh, again if it's uh, possible? Sure. And um, and now a word to our all, all audience that I don't see. Um, the colleagues, if you want to share with us the, the questions of expert lives belonging, how do you feel? What are others' uh, worries and concerns? And, and you are welcome. We are here together to, to, to chat with you and to give you some advice on uh, simply to listen to you. Yeah. You can also you can also contact me directly, or you can via my website on the homepage. You can register, and you will get an introductory tapping manual, right? So if you go to my website, you scroll down. You can uh, you can leave your name and email address, and you will also get invitations. I organize these things once a month, always on a different subject: procrastination or fear or stress. During the lockdown, I did a lot. Um, and uh, I did a lot of sessions, uh, so they're, they, they happen once a month and they're free of charge and you can just tap along, right? We have a question. Could we tap on the guilt, bad feeling over leaving parents behind and not to be able to there for them? Christina, so um, I think what you're saying is about the, the elderly parents. Okay, yeah, you're actually writing it, elderly week. That's, that's a really good subject, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm happy to do that now. I'm just going to wait. I'm, I'm happy to do that, Christina. Are there any other questions? So Maria, if I understood you correctly, I should go through the points again. Was that just to read re the cap. Of course. So first point is on the side of the hand. It doesn't matter if it's the left hand or the right, just under the bone, you tap into the little point between the eyebrows, next to the eyes. And I should I never know with these recordings which, uh, hang on. Just no, no, it's okay. It yeah. works. Under the eyes, under the nose, under the mouth, on the clavicle, and on the head. So this is the round, the, the round that we repeat two or three times. And the, the, the text that you have, be, of course, prepared 
together with me and it was really focused on the problem. But if you have, for example, an unpunctual problem at your office, at home, etc., so you can just use your own word and it's it it you have to repeat or not yeah so um yeah you can you can i if you if you put my name into youtube i've made different videos on anxiety on loneliness on sleeping problems i mean there's several videos so if you just put my name into youtube you already have videos there so you can just tap along okay. um, and uh, what else do I want to say? It's um, you can. I also I give classes, right? I give like basic introductory classes to UFT, so you can join these as well. It's all on my website. So people are saying very grateful. Thank you. Okay, brilliant. So then I'm going to take up Christina's request for um, for leaving for, for 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 this challenge, this inner challenge of leaving your elderly and 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 maybe a little bit uh, ill parents behind so what you would then say christine i'm just gonna show you how it works you would say even though i feel sad or i don't know how you feel right even though i feel sad even though i feel anxious to leave my parents behind i choose to honor how i feel right it's a difficult situation so let's just say that even though it's such a difficult situation because i'm here and my parents are there and that's scaring me or that's that's really challenging because I want to support them. I honor how I feel. And then you just describe the feelings like all this sadness, or all this fear. And you describe the situation. You just you literally you just whatever comes to your mind, you tap it. OK, so I wish I could be there with them. I wish I could support my parents and the mouth. I, I, I wish I could support be next next to my mother next to my father in these difficult times letting go of all this fear letting go of all this sadness letting go of this huge challenge right so christina i don't know your context and but but i hope this can already help right you you as i said you know you really can't do anything wrong so you just you literally just um you, you take the problem and then you describe it as you tap into the into the points Thank you, says Christina Claire. Wonderful.